Hi, this is Joan Landino at Joan Landino Says. Welcome back. I always talk about my colleagues, and I would like to introduce one of them today. Hi, it's Jane Buckley, Joan's colleague and sister. Um, short and sweet, I've been an RN, both medical and psychiatric, since 1982, and a psychiatric nurse practitioner since 2000. Um, Joan, what is today's topic? Today's topic is NAC, which we discussed in video two called medical food, but I made a mistake and I just want to clarify that. I said I don't know what NAC meant, and it is N-acetylcysteine. Apparently, my colleagues remember from over 30 years ago that it was also called mucomist, a common um, respiratory treatment for thick secretions, um, for example, in cystic fibrosis, to thin the secretions. And then later in the 80s, I recall it as being um, given orally for Tylenol overdoses. Um, Joan, I was wondering if you remember the scent? Ah, oh, I, all I remember, see, I do remember, because in psych, we used to always get people that had overdosed, and the scent was so bad that you would hold your breath, go in, give the treatment and run out, and that scent was sulfur. And apparently sulfur is the reason why NAC works in all of these combinations of medical disorders, genetic disorders, nutritional imbalances, and now currently psychiatric disorders. That's the newest. The, um, as, a, as a reminder, autoimmune disorders, let's not forget um, autism. It's mm -hmm. now being looked at to improve social ability in autistic patients. And did we mention Alzheimer's? I think we have mentioned Alzheimer's. That's especially why it's being used um, in a formulation called Serifolin NAC. Or plain NAC, and it's because of the cognitive impairment, and it improves the cognitive impairment. Why? I want to call it the scavenger of radicals. We've all heard of free radicals. We don't want free radicals in our body, so we either want to scavenge them or take antioxidants. And I want to say that NAC is the what of all antioxidants. What do you think? The mother. The mother of all antioxidants. In psychiatry, it's being shown to treat, uh, be helpful with um, schizophrenia, depression, bipolar disorder, OCD, gambling, Addictions. yeah, nicotine, cocaine. There was one other one, nicotine, cocaine, gambling, and other addictions, and as well as some of the autoimmune diseases that Jane has already mentioned. Anything, what is an autoimmune disease, Jane? For example, lupus, um, they are now thinking fibromyalgia. An autoimmune disease is any disease where your immune system turns against you and starts attacking your own body. And I'm having a conversation here, and I do realize that I disagree with some of the treatments for autoimmune diseases. They work initially, but they actually further decrease your immune system. So you feel better, but then down the road, it further deteriorates you. What are some of those treatments, Jane, since you did so much medical? Methotrexate, um, which is actually a chemotherapy drug. Right. Um, what's that? Steroids. Steroids. Definitely, but there's another one, Remicade. Um, they're all very harsh, harsh medicines. Yes, they help, but they are so-called dirty drugs. They have a lot of side effects. And I feel that those are Band-Aids, so why not let's go to the source? So again, NAC, we're going to call it, actually stimulates our own glutathione. That's another big word. We make it inside our bodies. Glutathione is our endogenous or inside antioxidant. So why can't I just take glutathione? You're asking me, aren't you? I am. I think I know the answer, but the I answer am asking you. The answer is if you take glutathione on its own, it is destroyed in the GI system and just excreted. What a bummer. I bet you it's really inexpensive. So anyway, we um, mainly, we don't treat Alzheimer's, but mainly we try to prevent it. So there's normal cognitive impairment, and then there's moderate and severe. So one out of two humans will most likely, with moderate cognitive impairment, get Alzheimer's disease. That is scary because in 2011, I think it's 2011, they said it was the sixth leading cause of death. So if you have somebody with Alzheimer's in your family, 
not only you deserve the help, but not only they deserve the help, but you deserve the help too. And I believe the costs were projected at $172 billion annually, and that was just Alzheimer's alone. So how do we get glutathione if we aren't taking NAC, or if we're taking NAC and we'd like more glutathione being produced in our bodies? Oh, since you're so about food, as well as I am, I think there's a lot of foods that can increase our own glutathione production, which are what? I know the cruciferous vegetables, broccoli. Wait, and what's that word again? I'm sorry, cruci what? Cruciferous. Cru cruciferous. Is that a Greek word? No, it, it's actually a Latin term, but it's <laughs> <laughs> broccoli and cauliflower. One note, I must say this every, every any time I learn something new. If you want to go and overdo broccoli and cauliflower every single day and don't add in kale and Brussels sprouts um, and romaine, uh, you're going to affect your thyroid gland in a negative manner. And we don't want that, especially with females. We definitely don't want a definitely thyroid problem not. at all. And there's others. Um, there's supplements, vitamin C, vitamin E, selenium. And, and NAC alone. And NAC alone. Which you can is. have. Uh, let's not forget milk thistle. It was commonly used, uh, it's an herb, milk thistle, commonly used many years ago for liver failure or liver damage. And it's sort of gotten to be not in vogue anymore, but um, milk thistle stimulates your own glutathione. Oh, I want to say one other thing as to why it works in psychiatry so well. There's a, like I said in video too, there is a lab test for it and insurance companies are totally covering that, thank goodness, because a lot of people would like the lab test to say, oh, maybe I do need this. Because not all of us notice a difference when we take NAC or Serifolin NAC, which is a prescription. NAC is over the counter. But a lot of people, once they see the lab test, say, wow, I better take that. Because do you feel vitamin E when you take it? I don't. No. Not at all. So the reason it's been working in psychiatry is it is modulating neurotransmitters, especially glutamate and dopamine. Everybody's heard of dopamine, which is our reward center. But glutamate is an excitatory neurotransmitter. We needed that to run from tigers years ago, run from most men, sorry, that was a pun not intended. And we just needed to, to just run from other tribes. So, or if we were Native American, we, we needed to run from us, white people. So what we did was glutathione glutathione. Glutamate, our excitatory neurotransmitter, we have too much of that now. So I call it, let's calm the beast, the beast within us. And that's why NAC is so important in psychiatry lately. And to add to that, Joan, that's so interesting. So people were running back in the day, yeah. a lot of exercise. Yeah. Interestingly enough, exercise also increases your own stimulation of glutathione. I didn't know that. Wow. Didn't Why would we know that? Because we we're Leos and we don't much. exercise. <laughs> All right, well, I think that that should be a wrap. And if you have any other questions about NAC, serifolin NAC, or if you want the lab test, please contact my website at joanlandinosays.com. Thank you, Jane. I have one last comment. Yeah. You're very welcome, Joan, and thank you for having me here. Um, in The Lancet, a, a very um, famous British medical journal, they did a study on glutathione levels and found the highest glutathione levels in young, healthy um, adults and the lowest levels of glutathione in aging, sick, especially hospitalized elderly. So my last question, do you think we've put our feet in the fountain of youth? I think we found the fountain of youth. How about that? Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>